guys, welcome back. Hey, we got some newscasters from a couple weeks ago. What's your name? Amelia. Hi, Amelia. We're glad you're here. What's your name? Kinley. Hey, Kinley. You're on the screen a lot, huh? Speaking of the screen, let's look at this week's crafts. Kinley, there you are. Ooh. You're in two Whoa. places at once. Whoa, that's Pastor Brad knows cool. how to do some cool stuff, huh? Nice. Hey, and look, that's a great artwork that you did, Kinley. And there's your little brother, Colton. Colton. Good job, Colton. Yeah. And guess what, Amelia? Daniela sent us two things today. Can Whoa. You yeah. She sent us a picture that she colored. Look at that one. Good job. Beautiful. Yeah. And she sent us the crap that Colton and uh, Kinley did, too. Ooh. Look, she did a good job. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Good job. Hey, don't forget to send your crafts to Pastor Brad, too. Have your folks take a photo, and then you can be on the Internet. All right. Hey, who knows what the story's about? <coughs> Kinley, what's it about? Jacob or Israel dying. Whoa, that's got to be pretty sad. Do you think Jacob's family, Joseph and his brothers, are crying? I bet yeah. you so. Yeah. Hey, Amelia, have you ever known anybody who died? Yeah, my Uncle Rick did. Yeah, your Uncle Rick died. And was his family sad? Yeah, they cried a long time. Yeah, what was her name? Aunt Donna. Yeah, Aunt Donna cried, huh? Yeah. Hey, Kenley, do you know what they do with dead people in Egypt when they die? Yeah. What? They mummify it. They embalm them, which yeah. means they make them into a mummy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think embalm is kind of a fun word? Embalm. Can you say it? Embalm. Embalm. Yeah. What, what do they do when they make them into a mummy? They put chemicals in their body to kind of keep it from turning yep. into dirt? And yeah. Then, and then they else? put salt in it to dry it out. Yeah. And then they wrap it up. Well, they wrap it up to make it look nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's what they did to jo Jacob because they had to move him all the way from Egypt to Canaan. Can you believe it? Whoa. Yeah. Really long journey. Okay, let's listen to the story. Watch the story, okay? Here we go. Israel's death. Genesis 49, verse 1 through 50, verse 14. Joseph's brothers and father and their families were all living in Goshen in Egypt during the famine. They had plenty of food there, and they were doing well. But Israel, Joseph's father, was an old, old man. He knew he would be soon be dying. He asked Joseph to bury him with his parents and grandparents. Then Israel called his twelve sons together and blessed each of them. He told them some things about their futures and their families who would come after them. The descendants of his twelve sons would become the twelve tribes of Israel. Israel also told his sons that he wanted to be buried with his parents, Isaac and Rebekah, and his grandparents, Abraham and Sarah, in the promised land God had given them. Not long after this, Israel died. Joseph took charge right away to make sure that his father could be buried back in the promised land of Canaan. Joseph knew that a dead body would rot and fall apart over time, so he asked the doctors to embalm Israel's dead body. Embalming, which took 40 days, was a way of preserving a dead body so it would not break down. During this time, Israel's family and all of Egypt was so sad about his death. Once the body was embalmed and the days of sadness had passed, Joseph asked Pharaoh if he and his family could leave for a time to take Israel's body back to Canaan to be buried. Pharaoh agreed and even sent some of his important official helpers along for the journey. The children and animals were left behind in Goshen and cared for when their parents were gone. When Joseph and his brothers and their wives and the Egyptian officials all reached the burial site, they were sad again for a few days before they buried Israel, just exactly where he wanted to be buried, with his parents and grandparents in the Promised Land. Then Joseph and his family and the Pharaoh's officials all went back to Goshen, where they, protect, where they were protected from the terrible famine that was still in their land. We see in this story how Joseph continued to take loving care of his family and tend to their needs. He guides them all to a place for Israel to be buried. He reminds us of the friend we have in Jesus who is also called the Good Shepherd because he tends us, his flock, with loving care. Jesus also provided a way for us to live with God in heaven when our bodies die. He said he would prepare a place for us and we could trust in him to do it. Today, thousands of years later, you can still visit the place where the bodies of Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, and Israel are buried. It's no longer called the Promised Land. The city near Hebron and the country is called Israel. That's kind of a sad story, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, we got a couple of questions. Amelia, what's the first one? How would you feel if you were Joseph? How would you feel if you were Joseph? That's a good question. All right, what's the other one, Kenley? What are some things that Jacob told his sons? Oh, yeah, what are those things that Jacob told his son? He told him lots. 
Everyone eats that. Something too. Yeah. All right. Hey, guess what? We're going to end a little bit different. You know why? Because we yep. got some special guests. Kenley, who's our special guest? My brother Colton and my cousin Paige. Woo, Paige and Colton, come on. You guys got to come say goodbye with us, all right? Hey, Colton, let's go show them. Hey, Colton, you're on you're on camera, just like before. There's Paige. All right, look at the camera and let's say bye, okay? Bye. bye. This story was written by Charlotte Aiken. Images from freebibleimage.org.